C++. OK, so the talk is about uh, uh, linear rank intersection types. Um, yeah, so my name is Fabio, and I'll be talking about uh, linear rank intersection types. This is the work that I've been, uh, I've been doing uh, in the context of my master's thesis with uh, professors uh, Sandra Alves and Mario Florido at the University of Porto. Uh, I'll, I'll give a brief uh, um, um, background on intersection types, which were already talked here. Uh, we can define them in this way. We will define them in this way. Uh, they are basically uh, either uh, variables or, or, or um, and, uh, type. Um, uh, they have uh, an arrow with uh, intersections on, on the left hand side. And here we don't allow uh, intersections uh, on the, on the directly on the right hand side of the arrow. Uh, but so in the first uh, few uh, intersection type systems, uh, uh, like the couple design, they used uh, um, this, the, op the intersection operator uh, was idempotent. Uh, and now more and more systems uh, and, uh, in which uh, the intersection is non idempotent are, are appearing. And these are called, as uh, was already said here, uh, quantitative types. Uh, and this is what we will work with. And I'll call them quantitative types from now on. Uh, um, so the the problem for us that we want to uh, we want to have a, a type inference algorithm is that typeability is undecidable uh, for uh, if we don't restrict these intersection types uh, because they, they characterize termination um, and so uh, restri restrictions can be made to these types uh, for instance the finite rank intersection types um, introduced by Leva. <coughs> And uh, the definition uh, can be like that. Basically, uh, the rank zero types are the, are the simple types. And then uh, T1 uh, here, as we don't consider these to be types in our definition of intersection types, we'll just say that uh, T1 is the intersection of, of simple types. Uh, and then j let's just focus on, on T2. Uh, so the, the types of uh, intersection types of, of rank two are either the simple types or a uh, functional type with, uh, on the left hand side, we have uh, intersections of uh, simple types, and on, on the right side, uh, a rank two type. And then it can be generalized um, uh, as, as we did for, for the rank two, basically. Uh, and uh, uh, so um, as an example, um, the, the, the rank of intersection types is related to the depth of the, of the nested intersections. Uh, and so for instance, th this type on the left, if we see it in a tree form, um, it is of rank two because we only go from the root to an intersection. Uh, to, um, to we only go th through the left of uh, of one arrow, uh, and in this case, is, is this type is rank three. Um, and basically, here we we will define a new um, we have a new definition for rank, um, and and so I'll give an insight on on why we did so. Um, but uh, if we consider this this term here, uh, the two of the church numerals, um, so in a quantitative type system, uh, this term is typable uh, with the, with this type here. It's not the, the most general, but it is typable with with this type here. Uh, so in, a, in an either potent system, uh, it can be typed uh, with this one because essentially this uh, intersection uh, here is the same as having alpha uh, in alpha, um, and so. And basically, this uh, rank decrease between between the two systems uh, makes it possible to to type a term like uh, uh, like this, the, the identity applied to, to the two in a rank two idempotent type type system, which in a non idempotent uh, one uh, will not be be typable. And this is this is nice for, for them to use uh, non um, idempotent ones because uh, basically we can type more terms, uh, but we lose uh, quantitative information. Uh, so, for instance, if we look at uh, this type here given by a quantitative type for this term, uh, this intersection here um, gives us the, the quantitative information that f occurs twice. This first argument uh, is given two types, so there are two occurrences of f. Um, and the we in the, so we have that information in quantitative type systems, hence the name quantitative type system. Uh, and so that's why we used, um, we used those in, in, in our work as we are interested in, in um, having types that, that give us more uh, quantitative information about the terms that they are typing. Uh, and also, an example like this uh, made us realize that only uh, the linear terms um, may be typed with a, with a simple type in a non idempotent intersection uh, type system. Uh, and I, I guess it's easy to see, because if, uh, if it is linear, so the, fir the argument only occurs one in the body of the function. So we have no intersection here, and it's the only way 
uh, or are the only terms that that can have a, a simple type in a, in a quantitative type system. Um, uh, and so we, we propose a new definition of rank uh, because we, uh, so we want uh, the types to give uh, uh, as much as possible uh, explicit um, insight on the, on the terms that they, um, uh, that they are typing. Uh, so uh, not, not only they are, they are quantitative, but we also uh, introduce here an arrow. And uh, what the basic difference between the, the two definitions is that uh, here uh, and on the base case, the, the, the rank zero is instead of simple types are, are the linear types. And then T1 is, uh, is the same as intersections of, of T0, so intersections of linear types. Uh, and now we define uh, the rank two in the, in the same way, but we have a new arrow here, uh, which is uh, simply uh, uh, to make the distinction between uh, a type that has no intersection. So it's, it, we know that it was a, a linear term uh, and it doesn't occur, uh, only occurs once. Uh, so uh, it is the same as a TL0, so uh, a linear type or um, if it has no intersection on the left side, it's just uh, a linear type to a, a rank two type. And if, if it has intersections, then we have the, the normal arrow. Uh, and then it's generalized in, in the usual way. Uh, we have uh, a new, um, uh, uh, an intersection type system for, for that, using that definition for, for the rank two, linear rank two. Uh, and this is a sub uh, substructural um, relevant type system. So we have this, uh, these two structural rules. The exchange is uh, defined as normal. The contraction is, is a little bit different. Basically, we can contract any two variables which are in the environment, and the resulting variable uh, gets the type. Uh, doesn't mean if they are different, it gets the type, which is the intersection of the types of x1 and x2, the variables that we are contracting. Um, and then for the for the, the introduction of, of the normal arrow and then the, and the elimination, is essentially the same the, the only as the other systems. The only difference is that uh, here we have two arrows. So um, to, introduce, uh, to introduce this arrow, uh, we need to have at least an, an intersection here. Uh, and well, we, we can introduce it. And then for the elimination, obviously, we also need to have uh, intersections here. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this arrow here. And uh, so we drive a type for, for, uh, for M2 uh, for, for every type in the intersection of the, of the type of M1 here and they have to be the same, and then we combine the, the environments. Uh, and uh, that, well, that's the rule for, for uh, the elimination. Uh, it's essentially the same uh, as in the introduction of the zero and elimination, it's just that we don't have intersections here for x. Um, uh, we also have a, a type inference algorithm for, for this system, um, and it is based on uh, Trevor Jim's uh, algorithm for uh, the, um, the rank two intersection type systems uh, uh, system. Uh, but in this in this case, is, um, it, it is idempotent, uh, so it is uh, more complex in the sense that it has to to solve some constraints, and, and for that, it has to transform them into a satisfaction uh, an unification problem. Uh, and in our case, as we are using quantitative types, we only have to uh, to equalize um, uh, linear types. So we are only, uh, our system is, uh, our algorithm is solely based on first order unification and we use the Robinson's unification algorithm for that. Um, and uh, we also proved that it is sound and, and complete with respect to the, to the type system that I just showed. Um, um, and well, uh, the sound is, it's, uh, well, basically we have the, the same type uh, for, for the derivation that we, are, we have given by the algorithm. And uh, if we have a derivation in, in, the, in the system, then uh, the algorithm has, a, uh, oh, there is a substitution, and the, the algorithm has a solution and there's a substitution that makes these uh, types equal in the environments. Um, so just an example of, uh, of uh, the rule of the inference algorithm for, uh, for the application here. Uh, I'll just have, uh, I, here I just want to show that uh, the only unification we need to do uh, is here when, uh, when we try, we, we just equalize uh, these, the types that we generate for, or that we infer for M2 uh, with the types in the intersection of the, of the type of M1. And then we just use the, here, Robinson's unification algorithm uh, for, the, for simple types. Uh, and, and that's it. And here is uh, an example. Now, if we apply the, the two to an um, uh, to the identity, uh, we have the type for for this. Uh, this is more general than the other one that I showed before. So, for instance, this is the 
for the first occurrence of f, the type of the first occurrence of s, and this is the, for the second occurrence. Um, and uh, so we we only need to the unification problem is basically this type is equ equals this one for f the type for m two, and this one is equals this one. Uh, we do from the unification now, and we have the substitution, and we end up with this type here. Um, so we have some work in progress right now. We have extended this uh, type system uh, to extract quantitative measures, uh, in this case, the, the number of reduction steps to, to normal form for the um, leftmost outermost evaluation strategy. This is done by uh, we merged our system that I showed with the system uh, from uh, Benjamin, Stefan, and, and Delius uh, in in their work type typing and split bounds. Uh, we we are still proving some of its properties. Um, and then uh, we also extended our type infus algorithm uh, to infer those number of steps, uh, and, but we are yet to prove the, its um, completeness and, and the soundness uh, with relation to the, to the type system, but we basically do the counting in the unification process. Uh, and uh, in the future, we'd like to further explore the relation between our definition of rank and, and uh, the traditional one. Uh, we, and we also want to adapt the system, uh, this system and the algorithm that we're working on for other evaluation strategies uh, and extend them for a simple um, programming language. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Up, up, up. Thank you. Could you, could you go back to the first slide, please? First slide? Yes. <laughs> I get the last of the data. <laughs> Not this one, right? Yes. So, um, sorry. Yes, there. Sorry. Um, is it correct that n is a gre greater? Strictly greater than zero. Uh, sorry. Uh, uh, is it correct that is n is not a typo? Uh, is is, is yes. It, yeah. It, no. It, it no. It is not. It's not a typo. Ah. So but the point is, how can you deal with uh, an argument that you will, you would like to discard? Uh, yeah. Actually, we don't. Uh, our we don't type. Um, uh, those those terms. W if it's basically the the lambda i calculus. Ah, okay. It's the lambda. I yeah, I didn't make that clear. Yeah. Any other question? At the very end, you. Sp book of extending <laughs> this, uh, yes, sorry, <laughs> the very last bit for a programming language, what do you have in mind? Uh, sorry? Uh, for programming uh, language? Uh, yes. We didn't really think about it yet, but, um, well, we just want to see if we can uh, do something like this for other, f this is a theoretical thing for, for the lambda calculus, so, but we don't have in mind any programming language yet. Yet another question. So you do not have to change the slide. Um, <laughs> in this uh, inference algorithm, is it deterministic? Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, so in the step where you type M2, in fact, you will always get the same pair of uh, gamma and tau. Is it the case? Uh, uh, at the yeah. third line, yes. So uh, gamma so, uh, I and the tau I. Here, gamma i and two i yes. will always be the same. In fact, uh, yeah, uh, the variables will have different uh, will be different variables. Uh, they'll they'll be renamed, but the type is the same. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, in general, in the intersection types, uh, within the intersection, you can have very different types. Uh, um, but I guess these are only well, you only get very different types at, at the unification step then, because. What? So T of M2 will always be the same, more or less, but then uh, at the unification step, uh, the, the result will be, uh, this is where the non-uniformity non uh, pops out. Uh, sorry? So, uh, the, in an intersection type, in general, you can have very different things inside an intersection. Yeah. But here it seems it to be very uniform. So you produce uh, well, very uh, uniform typings of M2, yeah, but, but then the, it is the unification step that does uh, 
produce uh, different results? Uh, well, this is rank two, so this is this intersections only have uh, simple types. Okay. So that's why. Ah, okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for pointing this out. Thanks. So we do not have time for more questions. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks.